like a year 12 student who's flunked an exam. Europe's leaders have gone off to their Christmas parties and pledged to come back to the seemingly intractable problem of fixing the 27-nation European Union budget early in the new year. And that probably means February. There's a 30 billion euros gap between the German-led countries of the north and those of the south, which now appears to include France. As Lithuania's president put it in bizarre terms, the atmosphere was surprisingly good because the divergence of opinions was so great there was nothing to argue about. Welcome to Agenda. I'm joined by Stratfor's Europe analyst, Adriano Bassini. Adriano, can I ask you first, there's not just one division, North v. South, there's also Eurozone v. Non-Eurozone, and then there's France v. Germany, and there's some of the newer members like Poland and the Czech Republic getting restless. It looks to me like a whole long time before this gets resolved. What we are currently seeing in the European Union is that countries are protecting their own national interests, and this is creating divisions in Europe. These divisions have several layers. What we saw first, as soon as the crisis began a few years ago, was a north-south divide with more developed countries in the north protecting their interests and being wary about giving bailouts or financial assistance to least developed countries in the south. But what we're seeing now is that those divisions are getting even deeper, and the debate about the EU budget is a clear signal of that. We see countries like the United Kingdom or Sweden fighting for a reduction or at least a freeze in the EU budget. But other countries, such as France, are worried that that could reduce the subsidies that they receive in their agricultural sector. And at the same time, we have countries in Central and Eastern Europe, like Poland, Hungary or Romania, who are worried that they could see a reduction in the development funds that they receive. And that's only one part of the story. There are divisions in issues such as the issue of eurobonds, which is something that France would like to see happening and, and Germany doesn't, and the banking union or the creation of a separate uh, budget for eurozone countries. So yes, there are many, many divisions in Europe and the political fragmentation is getting deeper. Now, there's two very interesting things seem to be happening. First, France, under President Hollande, is not just at odds with Germany, but his relationship with Chancellor Angela Merkel has deteriorated. Secondly, France seems now to be putting its own house at risk, if I can put it that way, rather than putting it in order. Well, during the presidential campaign, François Hollande promised to focus on growth measures instead of uh, austerity measures. But now he's in charge and he has realized that the reality is harsher than he expected. The French economy is slowing down, France has a trade deficit, a relatively high budget deficit, and most importantly, the French economy is losing competitiveness. In this context, Hollande has been trying to apply tax hikes and some spending cuts, which is upsetting the French population, and we see his approval rates uh, plummeting in, in, in recent weeks. But this is also creating tensions within the socialist government, because a big part of the socialist party doesn't like the way Hollande is handling the economy. So I think that France will be forced to apply some structural reforms next year. And I definitely think that a labor reform will be one of the key aspects that Hollande will have to deal with in, 20, in 2013. Where will this lead him in his relationship with the somewhat militant French trade unions? Can we look towards more strikes? Well, the crisis has not arrived in France yet. But if the French economy keeps slowing down and Hollande pushes too hard for this labor reform, we will definitely see some strikes next year, yes. And then there's Britain, outside the Eurozone, of course, but still in the EU. But as you suggested earlier, it seems to be playing a more positive role in contrast to the negativity of recent months. Well, uh, the British Prime Minister David Cameron is in a very complex situation, especially at home. There's a large sector of the Conservative Party, and there's also a large sector of the British population who think that 
the contributions that the United Kingdom is making to the European Union are way higher than the benefits that they are getting from the EU. And they suggest or they ask that the UK renegotiates its position in Europe, and some are even saying that the UK should withdraw from the European Union. I honestly don't think that the EU, that the UK will leave the European Union anytime soon because Britain is interested in being a part of the common market and it's interested in having a say at the negotiation table. So I don't think that Britain is, is willing to lose that. And Britain knows that if it wants to remain a key player in the international arena, it has to be a member of the European Union. And of course, most of his exports go to Europe and London wants to remain a global financial centre and not see it move to Frankfurt. Both its exports and its financial centre would be at risk if it left the EU. Yes, exactly. And, but what London does want is to recover as much sovereignty as possible in sensitive issues such as the some tax rebates or home and justice affairs, I mean, issues that are very important for, for the UK. So while I don't think that the UK will leave the European Union in the coming years, I do expect London to try to have a harder stance on European issues and try to recover as much sovereignty as possible. And adding to all these problems we've just talked about is what you might call a growing regionalism in the EU. Catalonia may split from Spain. Scotland might, I said might, vote to leave the United Kingdom. What happens then? Do these countries automatically get EU status? Or do they join the queue behind countries that are begging to join, like Serbia? Well, this is certainly a controversial issue. The European Commission has made it clear that if any state separates itself from any EU member, that new country would have to apply for membership like any ordinary country, which means that Catalonia, Scotland, or whoever decides to separate itself would have to apply for EU membership. This is already creating concerns in Catalonia because the Catalonian business elites are worried that they could lose access to the Spanish market or to the European market. So what's important about this is that the European crisis is threatening the territorial unity of some European countries, with Spain and Belgium being the most advanced cases. But in other countries, we are seeing that the crisis is threatening the links of solidarity between regions within a country. In countries such as Italy or Germany, we are seeing the wealthier regions feeling that the poorer regions are a burden and asking the central governments for for renegotiations of the schemes of distribution. So that's something very important for us, for us to keep a close eye on. Adriano, thanks very much for being my guest today. You can, of course, read Adriano's analysis at stratfor.com. Thanks for being with us. See you next time.